is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Kristen Kozlowski. What is up? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, May 5th. Cinco de Mayo, what's up? Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with someone who can't get enough horchata on this Cinco de Mayo, Kristen Kozlowski. I don't know about the horchata, but chips and salsa for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you big Cinco de Mayo fan? I don't do much. No. No? I, no. I mean, it's yeah. fun to think about. Yeah. My mom grew up in Mexico. She's not Mexican. She's Mexican. She's not Hispanic. Okay. She's a white Mexican, which is interesting, right? Uh, so this morning I was explaining to Venna the Mexican heritage because... My mom, her parents, her parents, yeah. her parents Genealogy. lived in, grew up in Mexico, right? Immigrated with the pioneers, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, yeah, we would, we would uh, have me- Mexican food all the time. Uh, in, so it's nothing special on the day up. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. like a Tuesday uh, okay. in our house growing it's a, up. It's a normal day for you. Yeah, it was a normal day. It was a normal day. So uh, happy Cinco de Mayo to Chips everybody. Chips and salsa. Have yeah. yourself some salsa. At, at least. Let's yeah. go. La Casita. I might be visiting uh, later this afternoon in Springville. Let's go. Okay, here's the show lineup. Preseason hype. Oh, we uh, we we like it because we're a daily show. USA Today goes a uh, blue goggled level with uh, a preseason projection to BYU. Holy shnikes. Do we like it? We'll tell you about it in a second. Gideon George is in studio to discuss his return to the team after entering the transfer portal. Why did he come back? Why was the decision so quick? And women's golf coach Kerry Roberts on the Cougars' upcoming regional in Tennessee. Good luck to the ladies next week. But first, today's headline. Two new college football post spring polls were released and the USA Today ranks BYU ninth, which is the highest poll this spring yet. Whoa! CBS Dennis Todd has BYU ranked 22nd in his poll. More on this coming up on What's Trending. Ninth. Okay then. Softball beats Utah Valley 10-5 thanks to five homers, three of which were in a row in the fifth inning. Awesome. Cougars have now won 10 in a row. 35-10 and 10 overall at Pacific on Friday. And baseball is at Pepperdine today to begin a weekend series. The two teams are currently tied for seventh in the WCC. First pitch is at 6 Eastern, and you can listen on the BYU radio app. Men's golf is selected to compete in the Stockton NCAA Regional in the NCAA Championships after last week's second place finish at the WCC Championships in Vegas. Regionals begin May 16th. Women's track and field signed Zoe Bonds and Marianne Barber. Bonds out of Las Vegas was the 4A runner-up in the 300-meter hurdles, and Barber out of Farmington High School was a 5A runner-up in the 220-meter and the 400-meter as well. And BYU's club women's lacrosse team is in the national quarterfinals after beating Florida State 13-9. Cougars play Georgia today at 3 Eastern time. No word on if Georgia will have seven first-round picks from the women's lacrosse team as well. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Okay. Uh, Eric Smith of the USA Today, as you mentioned, Kristen, released a post-spring top 25 head BYU at number nine. As Joey Lawrence said, whoa! Whoa. But Nice. (laughs) <laughs> Baylor at 12 as well, by the way. Notre Dame, 13. Oregon, 14. Arkansas, 21. Luckily, it's an easy Future schedule. Future opponents this year. This fall. Uh, is this a super blue goggle take or nah? Nah. Really? Yeah. I'm going to say it's I'm gonna say it's a good take. Hand I me, do. Hand me those blue okay, goggle alerts. Let's blue go. goggle Let's alert. Let's see if I can reach them. Blue goggle alert. <laughs> why Here's not? Why. why not? Here's why. I, th- I think if you look at all the factors that he put into ranking them ninth. Okay. Okay. Staying healthy, I think they can stay healthy. The return of Jaron Hall, who's a dynamic offensive player, and with the offensive line that we're returning to be right in front of him, allow him to open up the playbook, allow him to be versatile. He took fantastic care of the ball this last year. Then you look at the production on defense that we're bringing back, mm-hmm. 97% of our defensive production coming back. All right? Pretty good. So last year they were ranked 117th going into the season in production returning. We went 10-3. and three. This year coming in, overall, we're at 80%. Why Why ninth? Why not, uh, you know, fourth? Well, that's what I'm saying. They, they still got to prove <laughs> some stuff. But yeah. But I think they're a top-ten team, barring they stay healthy. All, all the stars have to align, right? 
And that's partly what he said. They got to stay healthy, but they have a lot of talent returning. Okay, argue it. I can yeah, tell you're, you're listen, fidgeting. Yes. Uh, if the stars align, yes. Okay. Uh, BYU can certainly do something incredible. My concern isn't Brigham, although I want to talk about that. My concern is expecting last year to repeat itself. Let's talk about it. Was last year uh, uh, and, and, and uh, anomaly sort of this exceptional, amazing season, or was this the new norm? We hope it's the new norm. We hope that after 10 years of independence, that BYU figured it out. They're tougher in the trenches. They have better quarterback play, that they're putting out NFL guys, Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, who's the next guy after that? Da, da, da. <laughs> that Jacob Conover, who knows? Tyler Algier, the offensive line. Aaron Roderick is the OC. We can handle these schedules. That's what our hope is. It really is, okay? Let's talk about what historically uh, kind of has been the situation is that last year was an outlier. We hope it's not. I'm just saying it probably was. We hope it's not. Sure. BYU went 10-3 and three with limited production coming back. That was amazing. Yeah. That was incredible. Tyler Algier, we had never seen a season like that. 1,600 yards, single-season record, 23 touchdowns. He was amazing. We haven't seen that before. We can't just be like Christopher Brooks. You're the guy. We hope that the combination of a better offensive line with an experienced Christopher Brooks. It out, right? Like Christopher Brooks can be like a 1,200-yard guy that's similar, right? Maybe Lopini Cato ups his uh, you know, game. The fact that BYU went 6-1 and one versus 7 Power 5s was unbelievable. That's not an every-year thing that's going to happen for BYU. In fact, that really happens for anybody um, in Power 5, that you play that many. And let's be honest, the Pac-12 was down. BYU took advantage. It was awesome. We hung a banner, much of the chagrin of the Crimson to the north. Like, it was fun. We did it. It was great. I don't expect BYU every year to have Tyler Algier-like rushing numbers. Or Jaron Hall took care of the ball at an amazing rate as well. We hope that continues. And that BYU performs against a schedule like that in the same manner. That's my concern. It's like whew, the combination of those things was amazing. And that's why BYU goes 10-3. and three. And the hope is that this year against, to me, a tougher schedule because, look, BYU didn't walk into last year with four preseason top 25 teams. You're looking at Oregon and Baylor and Notre Dame and Arkansas as four legit teams. Now, listen to this. I looked this up this morning. How many times has BYU actually defeated two teams that finished in the top 25? Is it fair to say that we think two of those four will finish top 25? Is that fair? I think that's fair. Okay. How many times has BYU beaten two teams in a season that finished top 25? I know this answer. The answer is three times ever. <laughs> three. One time was last okay. year. It was Utah okay, and Utah here, State. Here's 80, the thing. 90, hold on. 96. BYU did it twice. Wyoming, Kansas State, and 83, UCLA and Air Force. It's been a while. 84 didn't play anybody. That's why they win the Natty. They didn't play a single team that finished in the top 25. I think if Glenn, the schedule Glenn would take is offense to that. truly <laughs> that hard, you're always going to lose multiple games. I, right? I, okay, I understand your yeah, point. Yeah. I do. But as long as the team is beatable at that moment, do you know what I'm saying? You come into these big games, you take on some of these big teams. We talked about them, right? And, and some of them ranked uh, 14th, 13th, 21 in that USA Today poll. And BYU ranked above all? Right, above all of them. Okay. But it's it's like the Utah game. We talked a little bit about this. It's that Utah game where they don't quite look the best maybe when you play them, so they're a beatable team at the time. Mm -hmm. But then they look great at the end. I mean, yeah. they're a Utah team that wins the Pac-12, yeah. goes to the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Okay, so depending on where the other teams are at, where your opponents are at, I think there's a great chance that this can hold true or just being a top-10 team. Obviously, they have to win games, I mean, and stay healthy. And that's why I'm saying – as long as all those things align, there is great potential with this holding true. Yes. The high, the, the high end for this group on this schedule is really exciting because of who BYU returns. I think we what, – what most BYU fans, what I think you're talking about, is the controllable, which is like what do we think we know we have? We don't know exactly what the run game is going to be. We sure. feel like the O-line is going to be incredible. We think that Jaron Hall can replicate what he did, which is take care of the ball, be super efficient – run when he needs to, like Russell Wilson-like stuff. I just think the opponents, the, the uncontrollable, I just think the opponents are going to be tougher. Like, beating USC in the Coliseum was awesome. What if USC was actually, like, pretty good? Because USC wasn't good last year. Yeah. That BYU, BYU went in there, took care of business. USC wasn't good. 
Like, if BYU plays the same USC this year, it's going to be it different. It might not go the same. Yeah. Right? When BYU went down to Baylor, it was tough. I think BYU has multiple of those games this year. That's what I'm saying. Is And don't forget, a Boise State and a UAB can pop up. And BYU, BYU's two best wins of the year by AP rank were teams that they, they beat at the time that got way better. Yeah. Utah, Utah State. Yeah. Which, which if you're UAB, you caught BYU at the worst time. It's worst time. Um, so timing matters like you're talking about. So it'll be interesting. And that's the fun part is, listen, we talk right now. We're like, ah, Arkansas is 21st. It's, it's hype for us stink. to talk about, right? It's for us. Yeah, ultimately, until terrible. we hit the fall, it, it won't matter. Yes. And we hope that a couple of these teams are. Like, we hope that Oregon is in a massive rebuild this year. Mm-hmm. And that BYU goes into Autzen, take care, takes care of business. The nation goes, ooh, look at BYU. Already beat Baylor. Yep. Uh, you know, 2-0, and ranked in the top 25 early. Going to Oregon, beats Oregon. Oh, interesting. New Year's 6, conversation, outside Dark Horse player. Like, we want all that. Like, we had this year when BYU was ranked 10th against if, Boise if State. It was at, awesome. If you look at the Power 5 teams and, and the ones that are successful, depth is a crucial factor, mm-hmm. right? Our depth is getting better. It's trending the right way, I yes. would say. And, yes. and that was proven last year when we had players out. Other players stepped up, and we were able to go 10-3. and three. So Yes, and at the end of the season, it was like too much. Yeah. It was like, okay, but you know what? When you're when a fourth string walk on's playing in the secondary, like they're doing their best and I appreciate those reps, but that can be hard, right? Even you can even lose to UAB uh as a ten win uh ranked pow- you know, future power five team. So I'm not saying BYU's not gonna do this. I'm just saying historically, when you play four teams of that caliber, if they end up like that, they won't. It's just how many. It's, it can be It'll tougher be than you think. I agree. Like, like if 84 played this schedule, they're losing multiple games. And they're not the national team. That's just yeah. the reality of the situation. So our question of the day. USA Today ranks BYU ninth in the post-spring top 25. Do you like this kind of preseason hype? And let me ask you that. I do. Do you like this? It gives us topics to talk about. Absolutely, <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> Would you rather be New Mexico and irrelevant and not be or about sometimes it. perhaps overhyped? Yeah, overhyped. Absolutely. Which ninth is overhyped, let's be honest. I think Utah's overhyped right now. Yeah. They're like in the top they were five sixth. everywhere. They were sixth in this poll. You know, That's high. I, I get why they're overhyped. I just don't think they can deliver on that. Okay, let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. All right, weigh in on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. BYU fan guy on Twitter. Yes and no. Yes, because I absolutely think they can be that good. We saw them number 10 last year. Yep. Not out of the realm of possibility. The games are there, right? Uh, but also, no, because I want that chip on the shoulder that comes from being underappreciated. This team needs to be hungry to be that good. So just stay humble despite the preseason praise. Well, how do you manage that, right? Hope, hope and humble. <laughs> the you know, two, the two, two H's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Roberts, MN on Twitter. Like, certainly. Do I question its accuracy? Yes. Yes, I do. Fun, though. Yeah, ninth feels overdoing it. That's overcooked. Um, if BYU's in the mid to high teens, to me that feels like the realistic ceiling for sure. preseason rank for this group. Spencer and I think BYU's going to be in the 20 to 25 range in the AP poll when it comes out. But let's go, man. It's exciting to feel like football is good and is going to be recognized as such preseason. We've not been in this situation too many times. The, the more last they're decade. talked about, the more they're going to be recognized. The more I think they will increase in the AP polls, and then they got to win games. Yes, sure. show up, yep. win, show up. Um, and in the in the most successful season in BYU history, they were unranked in the preseason. Eighty four. There you un- go, unranked. So it just go win games. But it is fun when you have a daily show. They didn't have one in eighty four. Yep, all that hype. Okay, continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, coming up, is it too early to get hyped for the alumni game next year? No, let's go, Gideon George. Join this program. Come back to BYU. What's up? He's joining us on Cinco de Mayo. Go ahead and stand up. Just go ahead and stand up. Go ahead. Yep. Gideon George is here. What's up? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers.
This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball faces Pepperdine this weekend on the road. Listen to the series opener tonight at 6 Eastern on the BYU Radio app. Got to get in that top six to qualify for the West Coast Conference Tournament. BYU tied for seventh with Pepperdine. Let's go. Safe in second. Yes. Jerem Jordan, Kristen Kozlowski on this uh, Cinco de Mayo. Great to have you here in Studio B. Our next guest is uh, Gideon George, who's returning to BYU for a fifth season, one of our favorites. Gideon, great to have you back. Double meaning there. I appreciate you guys for having me on here today. And this is your first time in studio on the show? Is that what we just learned? Yep, this is my first time being in here. Oh, my gosh. All, <laughs> all it took was you returning for a fifth year and having Kristen here. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, welcome to Studio B, man. I we'll, appreciate uh, that. we'll get your signature at the very end on that flag, if that's uh, all right. Let's go. Okay. Sure. Well, uh, let's talk about it. So uh, for a second there, we thought you were leaving. You entered the transfer portal. Well, first you said, I'm going to try and go pro, yeah. then transfer portal, then you came back to BYU. Kind of walk us through uh, that decision-making process. Um, it hasn't been easy, but it's fun still, though, you know. Um, you know, I just put my name out there to go see what, like, what the NBA teams would say, you know. Just go get some few workouts with the NBA teams and... Also, I was just checking the boxes, though. Like, putting my name in the portal, I was checking the boxes. So, the feedback I heard from, like, most of my friends, they always say, like, the grass is no greener on the other side. So, I was like, uh, maybe this is the right box, so I should just stick to what I know. So, that's why I came back to BYU. And because I know how Mark Book work, and I, I know the program, I know what he wants from me, I know what I want from them too. So that's, that's like a big reason for me coming back to BYU. It's kind of hard with all the, the different flexes of the program right now, right? Chris Burgess leaving, going to Utah. You got other teammates that are going into the portal. So in your decision-making to come back, who had the most influence on you? You mentioned a couple of friends, but who was really the one that it – maybe caught your attention and went, yes, what, what am I, you know, what do I really want? Um, I'll say I spoke to the coaching staff a lot, you know, and my brother too, you know, and... Samson? Yeah, Samson. My, like Pitt? Yeah, my parents too, which they don't really, like, know what was going on, but I think they're writing with BYU too, so I think that's a big plus, and they really, like, influenced my decision-making. Were, if, if you had had more favorable feedback from, say, uh, pro scouts or other teams, was there a chance that you might have left? Um, I don't think so, no. I was still ride with Pope. So I told you guys I've checked the boxes, and I think this is the perfect, like, the right fit for me. So that's why I'm coming back. What are some of those boxes that you feel like BYU still checks for you? Um, like culture wise, like I've been with Pope for like two years, so I know like 
yeah, I know Pope and Pope knows me. So like going somewhere else is like hard to build that relationship again, you know, it's like I'm starting from scratch. So that's why I was like, um, so I had like, I had talk with Pope, like I sat down with Pope, we like had like great conversation. So I was like, I think I'll ride with Pope again. So that's why I came back. And when you talk about um, your decision to come back, you mentioned that you had some unfinished business, that this yeah. team has some unfinished business. What is that unfinished business going forward this next season? It's to go win the NCAA championship. That's the unfinished business. We'll be try I'll be trying for two years, so like I want to win. That's why I came back. Like I want to make it to the tournament, not only making it to the to uh, tournament, I want to win games in the tournament. So I want to have a deep run next year to the tournament. So that's the goal. Certainly this roster is in flux, which is normal at this time of year, but there have been a few more than normal that have entered the transfer portal from this uh, team. How are you sort of responding uh, to what's going on with BYU basketball in terms of trying to figure out what the roster is for next year and, and a new assistant coach here in the next little while? Um, I think we're getting better, though. Like, I think every day we're getting 1% better. So um, we're trending in the right direction, though. And also, I'm not worried because I know – I know Pope. I know like the coaching staff. They put in in hours every day. They like, they like. Kill, I bet you they're killing it. So I'm not even worried about that. So I, I know Pope is like taking care of business, and the coaching staff up there up, they're taking care of business. Now, what are the players doing personally? You mentioned the coaching staff and what they're doing to kind of prepare your team, whether it's finding those transfers, finding the players that you need. But as players right now, what's kind of the schedule with the spring going into summer that you guys look to do to, to take your game to the next level? Um, each and every one of us, like, individually, collectively, we need to get better, though. I think, like, that's what everyone is doing, though, this off season. Everyone is trying to, like, get better, you know, better their game, you know, watching film, like being in the weight room, being on the court, so being in the training room, you know, taking care of your body. I feel like every one of us that are staying are doing that right now. Like everyone want to get better because everyone knows the goals. The goal is like make it to the tournament and make a deep run in the tournament. So everyone is like really working hard towards that. Uh, playing Utah is going to be different next year. Uh, with Chris Burgess and uh, Gavin <laughs> Baxter there, what's that going to be like? Uh, it's going to be fun, though. I think I'm going to be talking on the sideline <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> Running out, saying stuff to Burgess. Yep. Yep. I'll be looking at him all the time. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, you know, playing. It. And you know why it's going to be way more fun? Because we're playing at home and we got yeah. our fans at home. So it's going to be way more fun playing at home, playing against them, though. So I can't even wait for that. They got to come back to this place. You have been a huge proponent in trying to gather shoes for Africa and, and send those shoes back home. So tell us about how that's going. Did that go into your decision? Did Pope say, hey, you got to return all those shoes that we collected? So you go back? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a little bit of the decision making there? <laughs> nah, he didn't yeah. say that. That wasn't in the fine print? Nah, okay, good. he didn't say <laughs> that. <laughs> Up, he so. didn't say that. He didn't say yeah. that. <laughs> he didn't say that but, at but all. So where where does that come from? Remind our audience that's listening right now. Where does that drive come from to help so many kids to provide those shoes? Um, back home, I was just like a kid. You know, the kids like receiving shoes. I'm like one of them. You know, I don't have like pairs of shoes back home. It's really hard. So like. We have organization like Time Out for Africa, like helping. You know, Mr. Jonathan Colo. He's like. He's the one that really like sets the stage for us, for me and my brother. Though you know, coming out here to America is like, like I'm a Juco. I saw one of my teammates throwing his shoes in the trash, so I asked him if I can like take the shoes. He's like, yeah. Then that's how it started. I started collecting shoes from my Juco. Then I came out here to BYU. They gave me like seven thousand pairs of shoes, which I've never seen like before. It's like mind blowing, you know. And I just want to thank Cougars Nation for doing that. It, it really means a lot to me and the people back home. They're really grateful for that. Time out for Africa. Look it up. Time out for Africa. The number four. Uh, time out for Africa. Okay, where does your need, uh, game need to go in this fifth season uh, for you, in your opinion? I need to do a lot of film study. Like, 
I need to like my defense need to be on point and like you know guarding like the point guard every night that will help you know and like my rebound like basically my offensive rebound though I got to shoot like way higher from the field I got to be very efficient every night so that's where my game need to be very efficient every night it lasts a lot of players, a few of them in the transfer portal, but also graduates, some key players that graduated. What does this team need to compete for an NCAA tournament bid next year? What type of players do they need to bring in? Um, I would say we just need heart, that's it. Like, we just need to fight every day. Um, I, like I said, the coaching staff are like, working nonstop every day, so they're trying to look for the right guys and the right fit for the program, you know. And I just say we just need hard every night to come play, compete every night. So that's what we need. 27 points, career high against Northern Iowa in the second to last game of the season in the NIT. Uh, you caught fire, man. When did you realize you were in the zone in that game? Um, I think when my first shot went in, I was like, it's going to be a long night for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, just seeing that ball going in in the hoop, so it's like it will give you, like, confidence, you know. You have, like, some swag, you know, when that ball drop in. So after the first bucket drop in, I was like, it's going to be a long night. So it feels good after that first bucket going in. Was that one of your favorite moments at BYU? Um, that game for you? No, really, though. I will say the St. John's game. Okay. When I first came out to BYU, like, I didn't know the place. Dude, I was at that game. There were no fans. <laughs> yeah. It's in random Connecticut. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I will say that you was my awesome, favorite right? game. So you were amazing. I was surprised. So, that, yeah, that would be my favorite 13 right game. points, 15 boards. Yep. Yep. And a so. six-point win over St. John's, the Johnnies. Uh, have you seen Richie Saunders yet? He just got back from a mission. No, nah, I just saw Foose post about him. Yeah, so. they were teammates at Wasatch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, like, funny enough, he, when I took my visit, I think that's the day he took his visit to at BYU. Richie there did? Was, yeah, there was this kid just talking nonstop. I was like, who's this kid? <laughs> Bro, just leave me alone. <laughs> he was talking nonstop. He was telling me about Foos. I was like, who is this kid? Like, bro, like, let me be. Then I never knew it was rich. So I'll, I have to tell him that when I see him. I'm like, bro, you that, you that dude that was talking nonstop. You just, like... Bogging oh, me, bro. Friend. Just yeah, leave me alone. He's gonna talk now. Stop on defense as well. Hey, yeah. th yeah. that would be fun though. We need yeah. that. We need that. We need yeah. dude that can communicate on defense, like can talk nonstop. So we need that. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna have three freshmen come off of missions. Richie, of course, Tanner Toulson, uh, Dallin Hall. Um, obviously, guys that uh, need some time to get back into the game, but uh, they'll certainly play into this season. With some other transfers, TBD, right? We don't know yeah. who, but it's going to be a fun little mix of somebody. We don't know exactly who, but we know yeah. those three return missionaries. So it's going to be fun, though. You know, like the missionaries coming back, they, they will learn a lot, you know. It wouldn't be easy for them, but I think they, they'll fit. You see, you see dudes like Trey, Trey, um, Trey coming back from his mission. Like right now, Trey is a killer. Like, I play pick up with Trey right now. He's a killer. He's figuring things out. So they'll be fine. So they'll train in the right direction. Awesome. It takes a little bit to adjust, right? Coming yeah. back on that mission and, and helping those players out, for sure. Uh, there's a report that you're going to play Creighton in Vegas in December again. Do you welcome that since uh, you want to? do you want a little payback from last year's game up in South Dakota? Hey, I love it. It's going to be a payback, and this dude that didn't come in to be why you say it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a fun one, you know. It's like little. You got some hey, good ones on there. On hey, I got I got everything in my notes though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and and you always play a competitive schedule, um, which will be exciting. So we'll see who you guys play. And, and uh, I believe the Bahamas is in the mix yeah. this year as well. That's pretty going to be pretty fun. Oh. Is that really why you came back for a fifth season to go to the Bahamas? <laughs> no. To the beach. Hey, I've never been to the Bahamas before. I think that would be exciting, though, you know, uh, going out of, the, uh, out of the state, you know, like it's going to be fun. So uh, I can't even wait to leave. It's going to be fun. Well, get in. We're glad you're back, man. Hey, and uh, I can't believe we haven't had back. you in the studio to this point. I know. Great to have you in, man. Hey, appreciate, hey, I'm just glad that I'm here, though. I'm honored to be here. Appreciate you guys for having me on here. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to the roster coming together. The schedule later. It'll be fun. Okay, we'll have you sign the flag during the uh, break. Thanks again for coming hey, in, man. Appreciate Good you guys. You. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, coming up, Carrie Roberts joins us as she prepares her team for regionals. And we continue 
mariachi music throughout the program, which is fantastic. Steve Young got annoyed about not being invited to the alumni game. Jack DeMooney has responded. We'll read the response. This is BYU Sports Nation. blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics hi spencer linton here letting you know when your company joins the byu team as a corporate partner your brand can be featured in sports programming on byu tv and byu radio in addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows. Place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows but it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow, awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Get fired up like Kalani. Let's go. So exciting after the Utah game. Cheers, Chris, and I am Jeremy. This is your Sports Nation. You can interact with the show by following us on social media. Your Sports Nation, that is. You can also follow Chris Kozlowski. What's your handle again? Kristen Koz32. There you go. Follow her on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Good Whip Brand is presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. All right, big game boomer list BYU versus Utah game as the fourth best rivalry game ranked fourth in the rivalries that must be played every season. Do you agree with this? Is this the fourth best rivalry? Uh, I, th I think it's up there. Uh, I think it's top five. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of playing every year, this is a fun conversation we need to have. And yes, the answer is I want to play this every year. Even when BYU is in the Big 12, and let's say they, they're going to play eight or nine games uh, in the Big 12, and you want another big non-conference game, right? Question mark? What or do, or do you? Game? Like, do you want, like, Tennessee and Utah and, you know what I mean? Well, next year, yeah. BYU is not playing Utah. What, they're playing four. You look at this. What's interesting is 19th is Utah, Utah State. They, they don't, you agree with that? They don't play. Yeah. I, I would say, if anything, it's BYU, Utah State. I don't think BYU is going to play Utah State regularly. Sure. I think it's going to be every couple of years now. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. What do you think? I agree. I, I think they're up there. I think they're a top five rivalry. Yes. And the, they, need, the, they need that. The fan base needs that. The perception of religion in it note doesn't exist anywhere else. That's what makes it unique and fun. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Although the Utes are like, and we're some of us are, are we? 30 miles one, away? 30, 30 miles away. I mean, Something like yeah, that. Something yeah, something like that. Round up. Michael Davis and Kyle Van Noy both tweeted out eye emojis the last 16 hours. Then this morning, Ian Rappaport says Kyle Van Noy is meeting with the Chargers. Do you like the potential fit of Kyle Van Noy with Michael Davis on the Chargers? I think he's going to be successful wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where he goes. I know there's a lot of Patriot fans that want him at the Patriots because he's been so successful there. Yeah, they already let him go twice. Let him go twice, yeah. right? So let him go somewhere new. Let him go where it's warm. Chargers and I think he'd thrive in San Diego. I think he would too. I think he'd be great. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a veteran that makes plays, and uh, it'd be fun to see two Cougars team up. Absolutely. Michael Davis and in, in, uh, Kavan Oil. Let's go, baby. Plus, nice. plus, I know it's not in San Diego. Right. Did I say San Diego? L.A. Chargers. You did. Sorry. But that's okay. I'm too old now. Uh, the L.A. Chargers. Is where did Kavan Oil have his greatest game ever? In the Chargers Stadium. In the 2012 Poinsettia Bowl. 
Good point. It's not in San Diego. It would be in L.A., of course, but. He plays well there. SoFi Stadium. Just sort of that, like, Charger vibe, maybe. I like it. I think that would be a good fit for him, for sure. All right, yesterday we found out that Steve Young was not happy. (laughs) He wasn't invited to the alumni game. Listen to this. Who makes the invitations and who do I need to go after and who do I need to go seek right now and (laughs) strangle, you know, for for the lack of respect? Uh Strangle. All right, Jack, who put the game together, tweeted the following in response. I am Jack, did you say it, Dumani? Dumuni. Dumuni, okay, thanks for the correction. To the GOAT, Steve Young, I apologize and hope to get a big hug from you instead of being strangled. (laughs) Next year it's on, Team Steve Young versus Team Jim McMahon. What do y'all think, Cougar Nation? That would be fun. That would be really fun. Absolutely. Now, now I, I do have, you know, I have, do have concerns. Steve obviously is offended. Feels like he can play. Uh, can no, can Jim surprised? still sling it? I, I don't know. I would be offended. Steve Young, how is he not invited? Well, I just don't want to, you know, I, I just, I just want to make sure they can play. But you can't be thinking about injuries when you don't invite him at that point, right? I'm talking about skill level. Right. Okay, skill yeah. level. I get that, but still extend the invitation. Because listen, K. Federick came out and led some drives down. He was not chucking it. It was dinking and dunking. Yeah. And that was good enough. I understand. That was good enough. I'd love to see a little more of, uh, you know, we were seeing Max throw it down the field. The play I, was a home. I definitely don't think he will miss out on an invitation in the future. No. And uh, yeah, Steve Young going to strangle Jack DeMuni. We Sir? were making headlines <laughs> yesterday. Let's go. Are you more of a May the 4th or Cinco de Mayo person? May the 4th. More, May the 4th. Like more Star Wars? Yeah, I love Star Wars. Yeah, I, I love both. Yeah. I can't say it's not Cinco de Mayo. My Mexican mom's going to freaking kill me yeah. if I'd say so, it's not. Halloween, <gasps> husband and I dress up as Chewy and Princess Leia. He has oh, a, full, a full Chewy. Yeah. He has a full Chewy thing? Yeah, he does. That's awesome. Yeah. And like should've the white, brought, the white like Leia. Yep. 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 Next year. Yep. We need Next a picture. Year. All right. Last season on BYU basketball with Mark Pope, we debuted two new BYU creamery flavors. Oh, yeah. Which now are available to purchase. Are you more of a Team Kalani Sataki Road or a Pope's post game snack fan? Full disclosure, I tasted both of these prior to being released publicly. It was a privilege of knowing Hema Hemuli. Thanks, Hema. Uh, Pope's post-game snack, ice cream with chocolate, Rice Krispies, chocolate chunks, and salted caramel. That's what you went with, huh? Caramel? Caramel? My initial would be Sataki Road. Mine was was Pope's. Yeah. I'm looking for less, uh, you know, brownies, fudge, the chocolate. The, the, uh, The pralines, though? Amazing. The pecan pralines. Okay, I'll have to try. Both were incredible. You sold me. Half gallon for seven bucks at the BYU Creamery. BYU Creamery, that's free. You got to pay for the next mention of that. Yes, that's right. And that is the Cougar Whipper. All right, coming up, you've seen Spencer's royal blue nails the last two days on the show. Now you're going to see how it happened. Yeah, what what uh, what went down there with uh, Taylor Williams? Let's go. And women's golf coach Kerry Roberts on the NCAA regionals next week. This is BYU Sports Nation on Cinco de Mayo. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. I'm a bit rough around the edges. This has been one of the most beautiful weeks of my life. I've never felt so much love. What you're doing is is something beautiful. 
Thank you. I will forever be thankful because I found real happiness. And that's within the community that we have made. And they made such a huge impact on my life. These are the type of people that really make the world a better place. Thank you, guys. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Check out the Deep Blue Podcast as Jerem Jordan talks with women's golf coach Carrie Roberts yeah. about the legacy of the Summer Hayes family in golf, the influence of her parents, and the decision to abandon her husband, then recent law, law degree to return to BYU to coach the team. Yeah, she abandoned the law degree, not her husband, just yes, to be clear right. on that. It does, yeah. it does sound that way. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Uh, who wrote that? Oh, wait, I did. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Let's bring in Carrie Roberts, who abandoned her husband. No, just kidding. The uh, law degree. So he's still practicing law, <laughs> just from <laughs> just from home, yes. not the the building. Yes. Yeah. We talk about it in the deep blue of sort of that decision to yeah. come back to BYU. Yeah. And uh, that was a big moment for you. And huge, here you are. Huge. Uh, yeah. Heading to the NCA regional next week. So congratulations. Yeah. On thanks. Making we're stoked. Another NCAs. Yeah. Thanks. We're stoked. They, the girls have done well. You know, they've earned it, yeah. and we're ready to go. Let's talk about what you're in the middle of literally right now. So <laughs> where'd you, you come from? <laughs> yeah, I came from practice. We're simulating a real tournament. Uh, they even have team uniforms on. We mix up the groups. And yeah, I left on hole six. I'll probably be back before nine. So we're good. That's awesome. Yeah. So how are we doing right now in the simulation? They, they look great. Yeah. Some really good shots. Yeah. Very cool. Playing well. I mean, I don't know what the scores are because I, wasn't, I was only with one group. But yeah, yeah it'll be close for sure. Well, we try to make it equal, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're headed to the Franklin Regional. Correct. I already played uh, in Knoxville, so that was a huge, yeah. huge tournament for you. How'd that help prepare? Good vibes. Yeah. Yeah, How'd we got good vibes. Um, we love Tennessee. I love, um, we love the food. We love the weather. We love the people. We obviously won there, so we have good vibes. So when they said Franklin, we're like, well, okay, great. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. We like Tennessee. Yeah. So I've heard good things about the course. I've never played the course, but they say it's straightforward right out in front of you. Which is good for us because we can make a whole lot of birdies. So awesome. Uh, the we did a uh, fan fest in Nashville a couple years ago. Okay, like one of the highlights of my life. Like really, like, it was amazing. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee cool. is legit. Nashville yeah. is amazing. It's amazing how many people have reached out saying they know somebody or people yeah. wanting to host us. Yes, take oh, care of us. Oh, it's good incredible. alumni base. Yeah. It's incredible and leadership. We met yeah. them and they're super We're stoked. Organized. So yeah. hey, BYU Nation, let's go. Yeah, Come out. out. Come reach watch out. us. Support. Monday, ninth, Tuesday, Wednesday. Ninth through the eleventh, which is exciting. And you talked about good vibes. Your, your team's playing well. You just played well in Vegas. And Nick Hutchkovic has really emerged. Yeah, better on the awesome. show twice yeah, in the last couple she's months. Awesome, she's because she's it. awesome. Because she's awesome. Yeah. Um, what has it been like to see her kind of become your number one? Awesome. I mean, just honestly, it's been kind of emotional for me. It's been just a highlight because of she really struggled through the pandemic. You know, her game really struggled. Got in some to mm. some bad habits. And it was hard. Like, it was really hard. Um, and and she never quit. She never got discouraged. I mean, obviously, she was frustrated. But she just kept working and working and working, you know. And it was just like, don't give up. We'll figure it out. And she committed, went all in, and just, I mean, boom. I mean, it's awesome. When she got her first win, it was hard not to break down because it was just it, that's what that's what you do. That's what this is why we do this, right? Is those yep. stories, those those success stories, and so it's been awesome. Yeah, she's just so tough. I mean, fierce competitor. You got two other players that join her on the all-conference team in Layla and Alicia, and so talk to us about those three. And and are they going to lead you? Like what? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in, in internationals, how they're playing so well. Yeah, so Alicia's always been a rock, you know. I mean, if you followed us, I mean, she has been consistent, right? I mean, she's just so good. I mean, you <laughs> you play again, you, you just can't make a mistake because she's not going to make a mistake. She's always clutch. And then Leela just has the ability to just go so low. Um, she crushes it, just hits it so far, you know, has that ability to make so many birdies. Um, and then, honestly, our four and five, I'm like, they're the ones that have come through for us. You know, Adeline was clutch. Um, early on, and I mean, Kirsten's starting to play really well, so that's that's pretty sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> but you never know, you know. We got to go do it. You always have to earn it. So you've been to nationals before mm -hmm. um, recently. What would it take for this group to do it again? And and you got to be what top four? Top four, yeah. Just toughness, honestly. You just got to be the toughest team and just stay in it the whole time. You know, just literally just execute your game plan, execute shot by shot 
really just, you just can't worry about the outcome, which is so hard, right? And just don't ever give up. That's our message is just get everything you have on every shot and don't give up. How do you not worry about outcome Seriously. Um, in, in golf? Because <laughs> what, 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 so like hard. when I golf, it, it's uh, so hard. I'm like, oh my gosh, I quadruple bogey again. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing is you just never know, right? Like, and people tell me like, gosh, you have to care less. I'm like, are you kidding me? How do I care less? You know, you but can't either. There's no way. No. Yeah. And so, but you can care less about the outcome and care a lot about the process. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so that's what should matter to you is how well did you commit? How well did you execute? Right. Mm. That should matter to you. Cause if you didn't, I mean, that's all you can control. You can't control outcome, right? Like we'd all shoot 54 if we could, I'd win everything. So it's really preaching, preaching, preaching. Like you have to matter or it has to matter to you how well you committed on that shot. Like, right. Like, was I worried about hitting it long? Was I worried about, and did that affect you? Little things like that, like care about the effort that you gave. Hmm. Where, where's been the biggest progress that you've seen in these players? And you talk about, you can't always focus on the end, right? It's about the progress. Yeah. And that's so important. Maybe some individuals that stand out to you that have made huge jumps yeah. in their game or just overall as a team. Well, that's funny that you said that. Cause we were just watching Adeline, Adeline's wedges were kind of her weakness. And, and I mean, just literally she, you know, hit, hit a wedge shot to, you know, she had, two in a row inside 10 feet, you know, and it was great because Anika, you know, she's one of the ones like, wow, her wedge is just in the last little bit have been so good, you know, gotten so much better. So little things like that, you know, physical improvements, trying to make those weaknesses strengths. Um, you know, you've seen the improvement with Kirsten, you know, <laughs> we have a great story about her driver, you know, she gets fitted by a, you know, expensive fitter. And, and I love this guy. Like he's usually right on, but he missed this driver. Right. And, and literally her driver is just like, like, yeah, we're like, what in the world? That's not her. So I literally went to the pro shop. I did the same thing with Anik. I went into the pro shop, grabbed a driver that I felt like she could hit, and she's got it in the bag. I mean, just out of the pro shop. And so little improvements <laughs> like that, you know, yeah. make all the difference. And so we're just trying to get better every day any, any way we can. <laughs> You've been super supportive of all the BYU teams, especially the women's sports. Um, where does that come from? Because I know you were part of a group yeah. that – went to the national championship for Jen Rockwood. And I'm imagining yeah. all of them showing up at nationals. If you make it right, like, <laughs> oh, come, let's on. Go. come on, yeah, throwing that out there. That picture is really cool, by the yeah. way. Yeah, you know, it's a community, right? And, and you know, Dilji and us and, and all the female kind of coaches sat down and, and tried to meet, get together. And, and it's just kind of grown from that, you know, these lunches that we've had. Is that monthly? No, no, no. Literally Quarterly semester, semesterly. Yeah. yeah because yeah. we're, I mean, everyone's so busy. What are you guys busy? Or? Yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> like, but you know, our next activity is golf, golfing. So oh, nice. yeah, nice. so that should be Who's fun. The best golfer? I don't know. You uh, know, you can't say yourself. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 oh, Jen's pretty good. Rockwood's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. 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 I've never seen all of them play. I actually did see, see Heather and Dilji hit a few and I could probably safely little, say Rockwood. A little work. Sorry. <laughs> Heather, a lefty, I believe. I've never right. seen Holly yeah. play, though, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, tennis, when then we'll have to do everybody's sport. You know, maybe sure. some PKs, you yeah. know. Yes. <laughs> some serves, awesome. some spikes. Yes. <laughs> but it's just, it's fun. It's fun to be a part of a community. Um, it's fun just to support each other, to know that they have your back, because they know exactly what you're going through, right? Like, yep. it's, it's hard, this coaching job, and at times it's really hard. And so when, you know, just to know that people have your back and are supporting for you and, you know, it's it's huge. It's everything. Do you ha do you get Hattie B's when you're in uh, Hot Chicken when That's you're in hear, Nashville, hot, or, or do Hattie you B's. avoid messing uh, your stomach up for this? Seriously, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we got to be strategic. But if you follow our BYU Women's Foodie page, BYU Women's Golf Foodies page, Instagram, um, I get more comments about that page than our normal Instagram. Say it, say it one more time. I, I don't know. I think it's BYU uh, W Golf Foodies. Um, what is it, Austin? What is it, Austin? BYU Women's Golf Foodies. Women's BYU... Golf Foodies. All spelled out. BYU Women's Golf Foodies page. Okay. We'll so Instagram, that. everyone awesome. follow. Oh, every I can't tell you how many people just tell me like, oh, I love that <laughs> page. Like, and then they ask me recommendations and these cities. Like, we try to eat well, you know, try yeah. to experience that city, and Very cool. it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Being on the golf team in college, it's a good time. It's Hanging a good out with time. Roberts, it's, it's a, a good, good time. time. Yeah. yeah. Well, congrats on all the success. Thanks, appreciate we'll it. Looking Good luck. forward to you next Thanks, week. Thanks, Thanks for Franklin. excited. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Good luck. Awesome. Well, coming up, Spencer gets his nails done. We're going to show you. No, literally. It's for real. And today's Rise and Shout Out. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Station. Exclusive video. No one's bringing you Spencer's nails today. I promise you that.
This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. the times you've come to our aid. Real love is a different thing altogether. And evil is rising from the ground. <laughs> Sir Dwight, you are Sir Dwight, desolator of the undead. This puddle of pig piddle. I like him. He's magnificent. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. More Jaron Hall touchdowns. Let's go. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Well, Taylor Williams is a talented softball player. And as we learned last week on the show, the team uh, manicurist as well. Last week, uh, you guys discussed having... Her nails. Taylor do Spencer's nails. Well, here it is, presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. We're making history today on BYU Sports Nation with the fabulous Taylor Williams of BYU Softball. Now, there's a reason that we're here and we're set up for a manicure that yours truly is going to receive for the first time in his life. Happy to report that. Uh, last week on BYU Sports Nation, Taylor came in. We talked about. Uh, the excellent skill that she has doing nails, as well as being an incredible softball player. And so I said, jokingly, hey, I need you to help out my cuticles. And you said, I got you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, walk me through the process. What's going to happen first here before... Okay, so first I'm going to push back your cuticles a little oh, bit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. How did you get into this? Well, I've actually always loved to do nails when I was younger, but I did tons of toenails. <laughs> all my aunts, <laughs> all my friends, I was always painting their toes. And now I'm just also exfoliating a little bit more of that cuticle off so it's not on your nail plate in my way. And I'm also just prepping your nail plate, giving the, the gel polish something to stick to. You're like the Renaissance woman on the field. Okay? <laughs> what position have you not played for BYU? Um, I haven't played first and I haven't caught, and I also haven't pitched, but I have pitched in college. You know, I keep telling Eakin that one of these games, he should just please let me play one inning of first and one inning of catcher so I can say I did it all. Yes, you, know? you need to play every position. I know. And just even throw to one batter. Come yes. On. Oh, we'll, just throw, we'll just throw Taylor in yeah, there. Yeah, I just do it all, you know, and that's great. Okay, is this the gel being applied? Yes, this is your base coat. Base coat of gel. Okay, so we're going to do all your nails royal blue. Do you, what, what are you thinking? Decision. I have like this color. It's kind of sparkly. Don't know if you're feeling sparkly. I don't need we'll the sparkles. Okay, I, no don't need the spa, I don't need the sparkles. Okay, maybe we'll do mostly. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what I'm feeling. You can tell everyone to go follow my Instagram. Okay, what is your Instagram? Okay, it's kind of it's kind of dumb, but it's T Will did my nails. T Will <laughs> my did my nails. My sister made it up for me when I was in school, and I just have yet to change it. How long does this last? Three weeks. Three weeks. Or longer, just depends. But yeah, so excited to have these on for three, three weeks. weeks. 
Okay, this is my little art palette. I'm Kay. just gonna put some of our colors we're gonna use on it. Art palette. I use my thumb as my little second art palette. That doesn't it, like no. impact your no, nail at all? No, because it will only dry if it goes in the light, so I can just wipe it off. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, that's it right there. Okay, this is looking good. Yep, it looks fantastic. Finishing up your mani with some cuticle oh, oil. Oh, the cuticle oil. You can touch them. Touch my nails. Yeah. It's all good. I feel, it's weird. I feel like my touch is going to fall off. Like, no! You just ruined everything! Oh, my God. Daily, that was so fun. Yeah, so Thank fun. you so much. Anytime you need it done again, you know? Okay. You're a great client, I will, I will gladly do it for you. T. Will <laughs> did my nails in real life. In real life. <laughs> and the pictures on Instagram to prove it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. That was so fun. <laughs>